Hello and welcome to the inside of the new Ford Everest. This is quite exciting, hey? I've, I've been quite excited about this, about driving this car, and I'm excited to tell you all about it. But before I do, big news, Cars Cosa is rolling out a brand new smartphone app. It's completely free, it's in all the app stores. If you've never used our app before, you're gonna love it. If you've been using our app for a long time, you're gonna love it. It's been downloaded over two million times, the old one that is super popular. So get on board, we'd love to know what you think about it in the comments below. Right, the new Ford Everest. Dream, search, drive. Cars.coza. With budget insurance, there's no back and forth. You claim, we pay. So you may know that the new Ranger and the new Amarok, which is essentially the same car, are built, proudly built in South Africa, north of Pretoria at the Silverton plant, which is pretty rad. I like that, proudly South African. But the Everest is not made here. They actually source these cars from Thailand. And there's nothing wrong with that. But what it means though, is that we have been subject to stock availability problems because of shipping and semiconductor crisis and all the rest of it. And so I'm recording this video at the end of 2022 but you'll watch it in 2023 and that's actually the first time that you're probably going to be able to buy a new Everest and what that means is that not many people have seen this car in real life and while we've been driving it around we have been getting a lot of attention like a lot like people are really interested in this car and i think it's because it looks good it looks really modern it's really muscular it's really chunky it's it's basically the the motoring version of large biceps with like a eagle eating a snake on on the bicep that's pretty much what this is feels very american looks very american it's got that new ford face up front which i really quite like with the c clamp daytime running lights and so this looks a world away from the everest it's replacing and also in one stroke it has made all of the other suvs in the segment all the bucky based suvs look a little bit old and that's a theme that runs right through the interior as well which we'll chat about in a little bit but let's start with the oily bits there are two engines to choose from one is the bi-turbo that's being carried over from the old ranger that's a good motor that north of 150 kilowatts 500 newton meters from a two liter twin turbo but a new engine is debuting in the everest it's this it is a three liter single turbo v6 it's a turbo diesel it's not a v6 petrol like you get in most of its competitors it has 184 kilowatts and 600 of newtons meters and that is some decent power and torque it really is so that means that the tow rating has gone up it's gone up to 3.5 tons which i'm sure you'll find useful if you like towing things around it also means that it is an absolute pleasure to drive whether you're in the city going slowly or whether you're on the highway going quite quickly it always feels like you have a lot of engine under your right foot and it really does leap if you want to go for an overtake put your foot down it kicks down through the 10 speed box and bang you are away you feel that kick in your back which you don't really feel from most other buckies and bucky based suvs so in terms of engine this is the one to have if you're willing to splash the extra money for it Now with all that power and all that torque, you are going to be using some more fuel. I mean, that goes, that stands to reason. So right now I'm averaging 11.8 with some sort of slow city driving. We have seen under 11, Ford claims 8.5 to the 100. I think that's a bit optimistic. So you're looking, I would say you're gonna average around 11 to the 100 in this car, which for this power and torque and for this size of vehicle, I'm actually pretty happy with. I actually think that's pretty decent. So 
So this is the top end platinum version. There's only two grades right now. You get the Sport and the Platinum. The Sport has the two liter, the Platinum has the V6. And you'll know it's the Platinum because it says Platinum everywhere. It's got Platinum on the bonnet, it's got Platinum on the boots, it's on the sides as well. In fact, you might think it's the Ford Platinum and not the Everest because it only says Everest in one place and it's quite small on the back left of the tailgate. So that's a bit curious. I think I would have put Everest up on the nose. I think that would have maybe looked a bit more, a bit nicer. But anyway, the Platinum does sound good. It sounds fancy and it does carry a larger price tag. So while the Sport is under a million, the just under a million, the Platinum is actually over 1.1 million. But for that price, it is very well specced. Now, I like to refer to this segment of vehicles as Bucky-based SUVs, and that's because underneath here is a Bucky. Underneath the Fortuna is a Hilux. Underneath the Pajero Sport is a Triton, for instance. And here, of course, underneath is the new Gen Ranger with all the new suspension bits and chassis bits. It is a completely new platform. And I was quite excited to sample the car's ride quality because Generally, with Bucky-based SUVs, it is a bit of a trade-off. So with a monocog or a unibody SUV, you do get the best ride quality. So that will be something like an Audi Q7, a BMW X5, a Merc GLE. But I think it's, it's pretty reasonable to say that those cars can't do what this car can do off-road. This is a proper adventure SUV and it does make you feel like you could literally drive anywhere, go anywhere, drive over anything, get out of anything, lots of mud or whatever the case may be. You've got lots of uh, 4x4 modes as well, too high, too low, and then a special new permanent all-wheel drive function as well. But one thing you can't get away from with the ride quality, and it's just simple physics because the body and the chassis are two different components and they're bolted together, you do feel that sort of jiggle jiggle every now and then. But they've really, really tuned it very, very well. In most instances, the car rides really nicely. And I think that if you are used to a unibody SUV and you're used to that really, really great ride comfort, I don't think you'll be bothered by this in in the Everest. I think Ford were maybe inspired by that song. My Bucky don't jiggle jiggle, it rolls. Don't want to feel it wiggle wiggle, for sure. It really is a thoroughly modern feeling vehicle this. It's bigger in every way over its predecessor. It is pretty much spec to the hilt. For your 1.1 million Rand, you are getting a lot of boxes ticked here. Hello, this is the interior. Let's start with the key. Quite a big chunky thing, I don't mind it. It feels like it's a bit lightweight, could be maybe a little heavier, but uh, I think you'll be pretty satisfied with that. And let me give you a tour of what's going on here. So there are two center screens available, an eight inch and a 12 inch. In the Platinum, you get the 12 inch as standard. This is the 12 inch. As you can see, portrait orientation, sort of going for those Tesla vibes, but a really well thought out system. I've come to enjoy it quite a lot. Maybe a little bit fussy in the beginning, but you definitely get used to it. And as you can see, very few buttons in the cabin, so everything happens here. So for instance, if you want your seat heaters or seat coolers on, you just sort of drag that down for your seat cooler. So that's how that works. And then the steering wheel heater is up there as well. So full Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and it comes up really nice and big on the screen so that everything is easy to hit and easy to touch. I think that's one of the better systems in any modern car right now, really, actually. And again, it's one of those things that goes towards making all of its competitors feel a little bit old school. 
And then complementing your center screen is a fully digital instrument cluster. It's very, very high resolution. Sometimes I feel a little bit let down by the resolution of the instrument cluster, but they've really got it right on this car and that's giving you all of your information and you toggle through that over here on the right hand side of the steering wheel. So there's your off-road display coming up, which is quite nice. You can get your pitch and roll right in front of you. So the infotainment system is also linked to the drive system so when you switch it into one of the 4x4 modes you will get all of your 4x4 info up here couple of the practicalities you've got two drinks holders in the center here and then you've got really nice drinks holders one on either side which pop out of the dash and sit in front of the air vent now as justin has just pointed out that's exactly where you want a drinks holder to be because it keeps the drink cool using the air vent so that's quite nice decent center bin up here wireless charging pad over there and that brings me to one of this car's more interesting features it's this sort of long-ish trapezoidal slot over here just bringing back some matric maths there for some terminology and then at the bottom of it i kid you not is a symbol for a thingy of french fries i don't know what the technical term for that that box is but you know what i mean like a like a french fry like a thing with the french fries in it and then that goes there they've actually made a space for french fries so when you're driving home you can pick up on pick on the the hot chips that's that's interesting it's a very american feature but i think we'll let them have it uh the gear knob is quite interesting so very different shape very sort of unique shape i'm sort of struggling to get used to it though because it's obviously easy to get down into drive but then when i want to go into reverse i tend to overshoot and go over into park and i suppose that's just something you'll get used to but while it looks very chunky it feels kind of lightweight i think a bit little bit more resistance on that would have made it feel a bit more sort of substantial i think and then in the platinum you get this really nice big panoramic roof with a electric slider that opens almost all the way past the back seats and makes the rear of the car feel nice and airy in terms of safety tech there is quite a raft of features some of it active some of it passive you've got radar guided cruise control which is quite nice you also have a fully functioning park suite so it will alley dock it will parallel park and it will drive out of a parking bay if you need it to one of the things that makes this car feel very premium and very luxurious is the sound system it's a 12 speaker bang and olufsen sound system and it really is the business and then to make sure that you can play all your kiff tunes through that massive sound system you of course have android auto apple carplay and bluetooth but then they've put two very useful usb ports down here one type c and one type a that's really smart because a lot of cars now are coming out with just type c and i don't think a lot of us have type c connectors so it's cool that they've put both down there right the back seats are very versatile you've got isofix on both sides to get into the third row of seats you pull this handle here then that slides forward really far so that makes it quite easy to get in and out of there then if you have something really big to load you pull this handle over here and that gives you a completely flat load area then if you do need the rear seats but you need a bit more space in the boot these slide in a 60 40 split which is quite useful as well but let me show you one of the downsides of bucky based suvs with ladder frame chassis and you start to feel it when you jump in the back seat now i'm 5'9 about 174 and look at that i'm literally one if i just stretch my neck i'm hitting the roof so as soon as you're over six foot here and i had a six foot passenger in here yesterday and he actually had to sit like this with his head towards the sunroof so you start to feel that this is not a unibody suv and you are a bit compromised in the back seat look it's great for kids but any adult over six foot here or any kid i suppose is not going to be terribly comfortable but if you are back here it is well appointed you've got two types of usb port your own fan control you've got heated seats and a really nice touch is you have a 400 watt 230 volt ac inverter now what's quite curious about that is that this is a british or a thai plug it will take a south african two pin but if you want to put a south african three pin in there then you're going to have to buy a little adapter 
Now this is an adventure SUV, so it needs an adventure type of boot, but let's just start with the sheer size of this boot area. Now normally we do a cooler box test, but I've replaced it with some film gear. This is our Hydra Tilter Alien thing. And look how long this piece of equipment is. And then look how it just, like, just gets swallowed by this boot. You've still got so much space. And then quite a nice touch, obviously. Wow, that's heavier than I expected. What an awkward thing. Quite a nice touch is that your third row of seats is electric and they're one touch. So you just touch the buttons there and then you can make sure that your four-year-old doesn't make a break for freedom while the seats are coming up. There we go. And you've still got a bit of decent space there as well with that third row of seats in place. Two 12 volt ports back here to charge your things or to run a fridge or whatever the case is. Four tie down points as well. And then here is your tools and your jack and that sort of thing and then this can be locked in place to act as a sort of boot divider so yes very functional oh and quite an interesting thing yesterday i got my sister's entire bike bag in here you know one of those full-size freaking massive mountain bike bag things yep went in here diagonally so if you're a bikist it's the car for you oh it has a spare wheel What I really like about the exterior look of this vehicle is they've managed to make it look expensive but not flashy. And that's something that the Land Cruiser gets right for me, the Toyota Land Cruiser. Because the Land Cruiser is such a functional vehicle, you sort of forgive it for being so expensive. And because it's a bit utilitarian, it doesn't look as flash as, say, a G Wagon, for instance. But I think the Everest, and I saw a Land Cruiser yesterday in that sort of basic trim, not that fancy trim that, that they have. I actually think the Everest looks a bit nicer, a bit more expensive than the Land Cruiser. And the Land Cruiser costs about twice as much as this if you can find one. They're almost bloody impossible to find. And if you compare this to a Fortuna, which I mean, a Fortuna is pretty long in the tooth now. It's had some upgrades, but due to be replaced, or if you compare this to a Prado, it just makes both those cars feel pretty 2012-ish in terms of look and feel and especially in terms of the cabin and the tech as well. So yes, this is a brand new product, a new gen product. And of course, Toyota will respond with some new gen products either next year or the year after, which should bring those models bang up to date. But right now, if you put the two side by side and you jumped out of one and into the other, the Ford feels like it's from the future. This Everest to me feels like one of those examples of a product where they've taken time with everything. The attention to detail is really impressive and the attention to how the car feels to drive is also really impressive. Like something I really like about it is the brake feel. It's just spot on. There's, it's just exactly what you want from the brake feel in a big car like this and the steering is just perfectly weighted. It's not too light, it's not too heavy. It, you can feel that they spent a lot of time just tweaking it and tweaking it and tweaking it until it was just right. It's like when you go to a restaurant and you have a really expensive meal, but you know the reason why you're paying so much is because the chef has spent 30 years of their life perfecting their craft. And that's sort of what this feels like. It feels like the last Everest was pretty good. The first Everest was a meh. But they're now, you know, 15 years down the road and they've got it pretty much spot on. Right, there we have it. We'd love to know what you think of this new Ford Everest in the comments below. So drop us a little comment or get hold of us on the socials. All the links to those are in the description below. The link to our app as well is in the description below. And this is a brand new year, 2023. We've got some really exciting stuff coming up on the channel. So I highly recommend that you subscribe so you don't miss a thing. 
Right, I'm out of here. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Be safe. Thanks for watching. Now, did you know that Cars.Coza has a brilliant app? It's actually one of the most popular apps in South Africa, and that's because it's actually really bloody good to use. You can save your favorites. So while you're shopping, you know, if you're taking a couple of weeks to shop, you just save your favorites so you don't lose them. And it's also a brilliant way of finding new car specs and pricing. It's incredibly detailed. I use it all the time. The link to the app is in the description below. You can get it on iOS and Android and it's in the Huawei app gallery. I think it's called. Yes, that is what it's called. Cool. Alrighty. And I'm done. Good. Okay. God. All our silos and archies deserve insurance that pays out. Cars.coza.